Hey, welcome back to Antisocial Studies. I'm Emily Glankler. Today we're going to do a deep dive into Prince Henry the Navigator. So we are fully in Unit 4. Um, again, I'm trying to go into depth on some of these specific people or events that could be really good illustrative examples of a lot of major developments of this unit. So who was Prince Henry? Uh, he was Prince. He was the fourth son of King John I of Portugal. So he basically had almost no chance of actually ascending to the throne. Uh, he instead kind of spent his life really being fascinated by science and exploration and the world around. And he had the money and the time to do that. Uh, so what did he navigate? He's called Prince Henry the Navigator. Honestly, he's not really known for navigating. I mean, he did explore parts of the African coast, but mostly he's known for sponsoring other navigators. So he was the one who commissioned the creation of the Portuguese caravel that you see in this picture. That is a smaller ship that can go very quickly and it can navigate easily along coastlines. It's gonna be really, really helpful for the Portuguese um, exploring further and further and further south along the African coastline until, spoiler alert, they eventually get around it and make it to India. Um, and he got a lot of funding and support from his brothers. Basically, his three older brothers were like, ah, let's let Henry go off and do his science thing, I guess, right? And they made him grandmaster of a thing called the Military Order of Christ, which is essentially the new version of the Knights Templar. So um, this is an organization that has a lot of money and they are gonna fund a lot of these expeditions trying to kind of explore new areas Obviously, for some of them, for people like Prince Henry, it's for discovery and potential wealth. But for a lot of the members of this military order of Christ, it's also to spread Christianity. Okay, what was his school? Uh, well, it wasn't technically a school. I feel like there's a theme here, right? The House of Wisdom wasn't a house and Prince Henry's Navigation School wasn't a school. It was more of just like a collection of people that would come together in different places and share ideas about navigation science exploration. And so he invited scholars and map makers to his court. He had um, a beautiful court kind of in this palace right on the ocean. And he would invite people to just come and hang out and like draw maps and talk about what's out there beyond the known. Uh, this is a map that was drawn uh, as part of his navigation school. Uh, if this is tripping you out at first, it's because we're looking south. And it's from the perspective of the Portuguese, right? So they are looking, if, if we're right here, right? Uh, in Portugal, they are looking south to the coast of Africa. Something to understand is that up until this point, because before we had trans-Saharan trade, but really Europeans hadn't made it really beyond the Sahara and beyond those great um, Sudanic trading states like Mali, Songhai, Ghana. And so they really didn't know. They really didn't know how far Africa went. They didn't know if it ever ended. They didn't know if there was a way to get around it um, by going south. But remember, we have the Ottoman Empire now powerfully controlling the Middle East, and we have the Italian city-states controlling the Mediterranean. And so a lot of the Western European kingdoms have to look for other ways to make it to the Indian Ocean. And so the Portuguese are really the first to get on this. They're going to become the first major maritime empire. And it's Really, a lot of it is thanks to Prince Henry. So he is funding expeditions down the African coast, trying to figure out if there's a way to get around Africa and avoid having to deal with or pay taxes to the Italians and the Muslims. So why is he important? Well, I mean, he... Now, I always hate to say like one person initiated some great age, but in a lot of ways he did sort of initiate the age of discovery. Now, there were a lot of people that were trying to do the things that he was trying to do, but like he did it. So, um, so he's the one that really is kind of initiating this new age of like sending explorers and navigators out just to like see what happens and if they come back, see what they found. He's a great example of a state sponsoring innovation and discovery, right? And so we've been talking about that in previous units, the Song Dynasty, the Abbasids, whomever, sponsoring these new innovative practices. Now Europe is like catching up and Prince Henry is a great example of this, right? He's taking money from his brothers, from the king, from the monarchy, and he's also taking money from this military order of Christ. So it's like in two different ways, it's kind of church or religious motivation, funding discovery and innovation, and also the state. Um, he, out of his navigation school came Bartolomeo Diaz, who's the first to round um, Africa to make it around the Cape of Good Hope and be like, hey, I think we can go around this huge continent. Um, but then he turned back and was like, I got to go tell Prince Henry. 
Uh, and then he, his navigation school also produced Vasco da Gama, who's going to be the first European to reach India by this route, by sailing around Africa. And this is a painting of Vasco da Gama reaching India thanks to the sponsorship of the Order of Christ. And you can see this is their flag, the white with the red cross. So again, obviously there are gonna be a lot of other explorers that you might learn about. I, I really don't think you actually need to know a lot of their individual names. I do think you need to know Prince Henry the Navigator just because he could fit in as evidence for so many different developments that are happening. And the other thing, sort of the unintended consequence, is that because the Portuguese get out in front of everyone else and sort of claim the West African coast, right? They set up all of these ports and all of these fortresses to where really now they control the African coastline the way the Muslims control the Middle Eastern trade routes and the Italians control the Mediterranean. Now, cause and effect, Spain, who wants to catch up, is going to have to try to find some other route. Enter a guy named Christopher. Cool. Okay. I hope that was helpful. There's more resources at antisocialstudies.org. Uh, also, you should be following me on Instagram at antisocialstudies. And for some reason, I'm on TikTok now at antisocialstudies, and it's super fun. So I don't know how long that'll last, but follow me and check out all my silly stuff. Uh, good luck in your classes.